This is big. PNM people, good afternoon. This is really impressive. And let me take the opportunity to say a very pleasant good afternoon to the chairman of the People's National Movement, Mr. Franklin Khan. I want to say a special good afternoon to a man who is not only red and ready, but is prepared to lead Trinidad and Tobago through the difficult challenges that face us, that will face us over the next five years, Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley. I want to give a special Trinidad and Tobago welcome to the former governor of New York, David Patterson, and former con congressman, Ed Tongs. Party officials, candidates, and the thousands of PNM people gathered here. And I must say to all of you here, and to all of those listening and viewing at home, that I have been coming to this place for 20 years at occasions like this. And I have never seen at this time in the afternoon so many people gathered in this place and you must commend yourself for that. I am also particularly impressed by the number of young people that I see in the audience. Young people give a shout out. All right. And when I look, when I look behind me, and I see the mixture of youth and experience. And I look in front of me, and I see the number of young and mature people gathered here. I can tell myself with confidence that the PNM is fulfilling its mandate to represent and serve all the people of Tobago, regardless of your age, regardless of your location, regardless of your sector. And the People's National Movement should feel proud of that. Brothers and sisters, I have come from Tobago to support a rescue team. I want all of us here, as we celebrate, to understand that Trinidad and Tobago is in serious trouble. And if we do not start the rescue process on the 7th of September, we are dooming this country, not just for another five years, but to decades of corruption, degradation, and finally collapse. And I am here as part of this rescue team and to support the rescue team, and I'm doing so with confidence. I have confidence in the team leader. Because you see, there's a lesson that history teaches us. I used to be a history teacher in another incarnation. And one of the lessons that history teaches us is that regardless of how challenging the times, they always come, a man always comes to the rescue. And at this point in time, Trinidad and Tobago, to get them out of the present morass, they need a man of integrity. They need a man of courage. They need a strong man. They need a resilient man. They need a Tobago man. They need a Trinidad and Tobago. So we're giving you a good Tobago man, a good Trinidad and Tobago man. A man who was born and nurtured in Tobago and then strengthened and prepared in Trinidad and therefore a man who is now fit and prepared to lead Trinidad and Tobago. I am part of this rescue team and I'm doing so with confidence because I have confidence in the 40 team members who are joining Dr. Rowley. I was just across at City Hall and I sat there listening and taking part in what was going on at City Hall. I felt proud to be a PNM because I recognize that PNM people don't do nothing by vaps. I looked at those 40 people and I recognize and I remember the process, the very rigorous process that they had to undergo. And I understood why we could stand here with confidence and say, when we give you our 41 candidates, 
led by Dr. Keith Rowley, we are giving you people who we know can serve because they have been tested and tried and they have been approved and they are passed the test. Every unit of the party has tested them and every unit of the party has approved them. And I am very confident in my two Tobago members of this outstanding team. Two talented, committed young women, sensitive to the needs of people, with a record of service. And I know that they are going to bring value to the team and value to the government of Trinidad and Tobago after September the 7th, 2015. And therefore, I'm proud, Tobago is proud to present them to you and to ask you to embrace them. And I have confidence, I have confidence, brother, brothers and sisters, in the plans and programs and projections of the People's National Movement. I was also there and I listened to Mr. Colm Imbert. Just gives, yeah, good man, good man, good man. Yeah, just give snippets, just give snippets from the PNM manifesto. And when I listened to the man, I said, we're ready, we're real ready. Because we not only have, we not only have the people, we have a real plan. But I say to our brothers and sisters, this is not just by looking at what we have to offer. This is a contest. And when you're in a contest, you've got to make comparisons. And therefore, I'm comparing, and we need to compare what the PNM is presenting to you this afternoon and what will be presenting to you over the next few weeks to what the other side is doing. And when I look at the other side, I am asking myself, is this really a contest? Because the other team is entering the contest based on the reputation and track record of the leader. No team can do that and expect to win a contest and expect to achieve his objective. We are Trinidadians and Tobagonians. I want you to remember Brian Lara, the best batsman in the world at that time, the best batsman in the world ever. Brian Lara was captain of the West Indies team. And despite his heroics as captain of the West Indies team, the West Indies team did not do well. Because you cannot go on the reputation and the achievements of your leader only. But I say to you, brothers and sisters, Kamla Pasad Bisesa is no Brian Lara. While Brian Lara had Achieve, had a, a track record of positive achievements that inspired pride and confidence in us as citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. On the other hand, Kamala Pusat de Sessa, she has a track record too. A track record that is causing us to screen with embarrassment and shame. And many of us are, are embarrassed to even admit that we are Trinidadians and Tobagonians because of what this lady and her team have, would have done for us. In other words, we have earned a very negative, a very negative reaction among people in the region and throughout the world. This woman, this leader, on whom the entire UNC is basing its fate and its fortune, this leader is a woman with a track record of presiding over more scandals, more corruption, more nepotism, more discrimination than any other prime minister in the history of this country. So she has a record. Just as what Brian Lara has a record, she has a record. She has a record of interfering with and attempting to undermine and dismantle almost every institution that supports our democracy. She tried it with the presidency. She tried it with the judiciary. She tried it with parliament. She tried it with the integrity commission. She tried it with the services commission. She tried it and got a lot of assistance with the office of the attorney general. That is the person on whom 
this, this, this party is in fact placing all its focus and in telling us that a woman like that is somebody who can stand up against the PNM with a leader, with a team member, and with a real plan. So I'm saying that a woman with a track record of that kind of profligate spending, spending $300 billion over five years, with nothing to show for it, but a number of millionaires whom she has in fact created, that is her only legacy. I am asking you, therefore, brothers and sisters, all of us have to make a choice between what the PNM offers and what the UNC offers, and you'll recognize that it is a new context. For us in Tobago, the track record left by Kamala Pasad de Cecil is one of facilitating and, in fact, funding the Ministry of Tobago Development to undermine the Tobago House of Assembly for which Tobagonians had fought and struggled for many decades. So we had a situation where this Prime Minister, this Prime Minister with a plan, was on one hand encouraging the Ministry of Tobago Development to destroy the Tobago House of Assembly, and on the other hand, she pretending to want to give the Tobago House of Assembly more power. And it is no wonder that she has now earned the title of Mama of Mama Guy. And she has, in fact, Mama Guide the public of Trinidad and Tobago too long. And we cannot afford to take any more. And on the 7th of August, 7th of September, sorry, we have to make the choice. I am saying, therefore, to you, brothers and sisters, that this is not just a time for us to stand here and listen to the speakers. We all have to stand here and ensure that we get the message and that we take the message. Because if the tens of thousands of you here are sufficiently concerned that this is a valid message coming from the People's National Movement, and you also recognize the importance and the consequences to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, if this message is not understood by everybody, you now have a responsibility to leave here as messengers. And it is in that context, I want to just say a word to the undecided. And I want you to carry a message to the undecided. Because despite what has happened over the past five years, despite the atrocities inflicted on us as citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, there are still people who are undecided. I am saying to those people, that if you do not vote on September the 7th, you are condoning the corruption and the mismanagement, and you are condoning the atrocities which we have experienced over the past five years. And I'll tell you something. Yeah. I'll tell you something. These individuals, sometimes they don't want to listen to politicians. So before I close, I will share with you the words of a non-politician. Terence Farrell, deputy, of the, deputy governor of the Central Bank. And if the Central Bank ever needed him, was no. And listen to what Terence Farrell said in an article in the Express, yesterday's Express. Her reckless endangerment of the national economy has put our medium-term outlook at considerable risk. And he goes on. If the current crew are left in the cockpit, and fiscal irresponsibility continues to prevail, the crash of this economy is a scenario which is not beyond belief. And listen to Terence Fowler, not a politician, but a man who, like all of us, is frightened of what will happen if we make the wrong decisions. Clearly, more people, more, more capable and responsible leadership will be required to put us safely on the ground of today's economic reality which is very different from that of 2014. And he goes on to, to, in fact, indicate to us that we got to change the present crew. And therefore, brothers and sisters, I say to the undecided, if you can't vote for love of the PNM, vote for fear of the UNC, because that is serious business. And I say to all of us, I say to all of us, 
Next time Kamala Prasad Bissessa irritates you with that Kamala have a plan. Next time she irritates you. And I show you what the child tells you to say that. Tell her, tell her that we in the People's National Movement, we in Tobago and we in Trinidad and Tobago have a plan. And the plan is to get rid of her on September the 7th, 2015. The only plan that we want from her is when we do that, for her to leave quietly and quickly. That's the only plan we want from her. And when that, and when that happens, and when we would have done what we have to do, and she would have done what she has to do, and she takes some motley crew with her outside of the corridors of power, all of us, the tens of thousands of us here, all of us, who understand the need for good governance in Trinidad and Tobago can with one loud voice stretch a figurative arm between Tobago and Trinidad and across all the locations in this country and say we have rescued Trinidad and Tobago and great is the great is The Honourable Chief Secretary of Tobago House of Assembly, Mr. Orville London.